Okay, so I'm going to try and do a video here on um, working with cow husbandry and creating your own mod uh, for a, well, in this particular case, cow barn small. Uh, even though this actually doesn't have a, a barn attached to it, it's just an, a, an open pasture. Well, I say open pasture, it's just a pasture with a uh, fence around it, around it um, but it's actually got no barn or buildings or anything else, just a couple of... Uh, you know, your feed trough and your water trough and a fenced in area um, but the difference is uh, with 22 we have an external um, nav mesh which is then dynamically loaded into the arm um, placeable so uh, there's a little bit you know we have to make a few or there are some changes that we need to obviously understand um, and work with so what I'm going to do here is create a new folder on my desktop and I'm just going to call this uh, fs22 underscore I don't know, I guess we could just call it the same, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll just call it Cow Barn Small, who cares? You know, uh, you, you, you come up with whatever name you want to call it, but that'll be fine, I'm just going to call it that for now. So, um, what I need to do then is copy all of this into this folder. So I'm just going to go, going to do Control A, right click and drag it over and then copy it. Uh, we'll minimise that for now, we might need that again. Um, so I need a mod desk, and yeah, we do need it again. So um, if I go into um, the SDK folder, so in your FarmSim22, you have an SDK folder, or should have. If you go to Maps, doesn't matter which one, go into here, you'll have a mod desk, and you can just copy that over. So just right-click, drag it over, and copy it. Um, and then we need to make some changes here, because this was a design for a map. And we're obviously not working with a map so we need to open that up i'm using notepad plus plus so i'm just going to shift select and highlight all of these parts here and delete them we don't need any of that stuff to do with the map stuff and i'm just going to put my name in here as the author <clears throat> and then we'll just call this whatever so again you just call this uh well in this case we'll just call it cow barn um small okay and I'm just going to copy that and paste it in all of these areas. Oh. You would need to potentially give this a better title and description, especially if you're going to be uploading it to the Mod Hub. Um, and then we need to put in some information for our store item. So we need a, a way of loading in our XML here for the Calvan small to work. So if we go back into our farm sim 22 folder data uh, maps map us doesn't matter which one could be french the us one or the alpine one doesn't matter all we want here is the store items xml because this has the information that we want so i'm just going to copy this line the start tag and we'll paste that in and i'm going to take one of the um store item xml file name lines here copy that and paste that in like so um, and then we can just take our start tag here and uh, copy that and paste it and then close it with an end tag like so and we have everything all linked up um, as it should be so we can close that one down and we're going to change this here and link it to our placeable mod here so we want the cow barn small information from the xml i'm just going to basically overwrite all of this with that so this will be read by the game and it will then look for the store item and load in our particular mod perfect so we can save that don't really do anything else there i don't care about the icon for now um, you need to obviously create your own icon and whatever else there is the I fs icon generator script that you can download from the uh, giants developer network um, it is this one here uh, farming set or the fs icon generator 22 I don't know if this has been updated, but the version I have is 1.0.1. .1. It works really, really well, actually. So um, if, if there is an update, it will be available on the Giants Developer Network. But otherwise, whatever version they've got there, I recommend to get that if you want to create store item, store icons and um, I, you know your um, <coughs> um, icon and store data images, whatever they're called. It's one of those days today, I tell you. Um, anyway, so uh, we actually have this in here, but uh, I don't really need that there because in this particular case, there's nothing really changed about this particular mod. 
from the default um, and uh, potentially I would want to be I want, would want to create my my own anyway so I might just as well delete that for now don't really need that um, so we need to make a few changes to our XML so that everything is linked in correctly for now I'm just going to leave this one here the image the store image point into the uh, uh, game directory folder for the actual uh, uh, store I store um, image that's fine uh, the price you can obviously change that to whatever you want it to be and the daily upkeep and all that sort of stuff uh, but all of that stuff I'm going to leave as default I need this to point to my um, i3d file so I'm just going to delete the extra information there so it will look at my i3d all this other stuff I'm going to leave as it is for now don't need to change any of that stuff and if we come on down into here we have our file name for the navigation mesh obviously I need to have that point into my navigation mesh not the uh, base game one so we'll just delete all the extra information there as well and uh, the fence stuff we'll leave as it is that's fine and everything else there we can leave it as it is so just going to click save and we'll close that down so as far as that goes we have everything set up and um, what I would do is just what I would what I will do now and what I would recommend to do is when you get to this point when you're creating your own mod setup like this is put it into a mod folder and make sure that it actually does load up and give you no errors because the worst thing you can do is um, spend a lot of time modifying things and you could be modifying what is potentially already a broken um, mod um, theoretically all of this should work but there's nothing to say you know I've put something in the wrong place or I've you know um, not set something up correctly and I could already have a problem uh, and I need to fix that before I go any further so I'd highly recommend to put it in your mod folder and just run the game quick and uh, make sure that it does actually load in correctly and um, you know everything works uh, as intended before you go any further this is a good sign that we do have it showing up here again don't worry about the icon um, because it's always going to give me an error until I load that in but as that is the only error so far we're looking good um, now I do have console commands turned on or the console turned on so uh, I can quickly you know press the tilde key and check for any errors but you can always go into your uh, farm sim um, <coughs> folder here where you have all your mods and you'll have your log text if you open that up in notepad plus plus you'll be able to go through here and see if there's any errors and things like that uh, that way if you don't have the console um, turned on so I'm going to come into here and we'll start this going to here we don't need that don't need that so I'm just going to give myself some money I'm going to use the uh, console here uh, so we'll just do like that and I'm just going to buy all the land, so uh, GS, farm, and then tab, and we'll just do all, so I own every part of land on the map. And then I'm just going to go P, construction, animals, and I have my custom one loaded just here. So we'll come over, and we'll just quickly place that down, and uh, again, check for errors, and we have none. Fantastic. So I'm just going to come over here, and... We'll buy some animals. I'm just going to literally buy 15 of those. And like so. And we have our animals. Fantastic. Again, we have no errors. So, so far, everything is working as intended. Um, and we have a custom animal pasture. Okay. So, next thing then is to uh, increase that outwards. Make it bigger. So what I'm going to do then is go back into here and if I open this up in the Giants editor <clears throat> in the scene graph here we have this navigation root node and in there we have the actual navigation physical navigation mesh the actual object that the navigation mesh is created from so if I come over to shape and we go into here, we have non-renderable. And I take the tick out of the box, it now becomes renderable. So this is actual physical geometry 
that the navigation mesh is created from. This isn't the actual navigation mesh itself yet. We need to create it. But I want to expand this out to make it bigger. So what I'm going to do is go create primitive plane. And I'm going to take that and just basically drag it into the root node here. And I'm just going to make this bigger. Um, so <clears throat> I don't want to mess up the, the uh, original really. Uh, because that's important um, to get that right where it is around the troughs and everything. So I'm going to keep the original one there, but just add to it. So what I could possibly do here is just, you know, expand this out. It doesn't matter if they're overlapping or whatever else. So, you know, you can just kind of uh, make this as big as you want, really. So let's say we want to go, I don't know, 80, whatever, and then make this one as big as you want it to be that way however you want however you want to do it so um i don't know this might be better if i do it with multiple uh planes so if i basically bring this one back so that it meets the edge of that one there something perhaps maybe like that i don't know that possibly would do um, and then I would just go Control D to duplicate that one and just drag this one out, you know, to somewhere like that. OK, so this is going to be the size of my new nav mesh. I'm just basically increasing the size of it. So what we need to do is tell the system that this is a navigation mesh. So we come over to here or what we're going to create a navigation mesh from. So with it selected, we come over to the shapes tab in the attributes. Um, and here we have this build nav mesh mask. Uh, so we need to click on this little dot 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 thing, which brings up this panel. And in here, you literally just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven to give you a bit mask hex code of FE. I'm just going to copy that and we click OK. And this one here I can just click on the little dot 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 thing and then paste that in, which will just give me what I need. And we're now good to go. So if we click on the root node here, the transform group, and then go create navigation mesh. And we need to put in our radius for the actual animal that we're working with. And I honestly can't remember what they are. I think cows is 1.2, but I could be wrong. Um, okay, so I've got... Um, the Farm and Simulator modding for dummies um, manual here. This is a really old manual and it's not been updated in a long time, but it is still handy to have and um, reference at times. It will give you some information uh, to get you started with modding and things like that. If you have Farm Sim 17, this actually comes with Farm Sim 17 uh, in the SDK folder. Um, now, I don't honestly remember if this is still up on the GDN, the Giants Developer Network. It possibly still is. Um, or there may be uh, a site that you can look at this, you know, without actually having to purchase it. I actually did buy this, the, the hard copy of this, back in 15. Um, and, uh, yeah, from there, Giants, of, it, Giants actually started to include it. Um, now I'm pretty sure with the collector's edition of 22, this actually comes on the tutorial DVD or CD-ROM or whatever it is. But um, <clears throat> I can't remember. But anyway, I've got this from my FarmSim 17 um, installation as a PDF because, as I say, I've got the hard copy of it from 15, uh, which I purchased. But uh, if you look through here, and I forget where it is in amongst all this stuff, but somewhere in amongst all this, there is some navigation um, information. Uh, let's see. Working with, working with, let's see if I can find it. Probably just easier animals, there we go. Um, navigation meshes. Okay, so if we go into here, you can see all the different channels. Now again, this is very old. So it only does it go up to chickens. It does not include pigs or horses, uh, but you can kind of guess at it. Um, so when it comes to like uh, your uh, actual radius, 
you can kind of guess at what they should be. So cows are 1.2, sheep 0.7, and chickens 0.15. I'm pretty sure pigs are the same as sheep, so they would be 0.7 for the radius, and horses probably would be the same as cows, so 1.2. Uh, but that would be a guess on the horses, I'm not sure on that. But we know now that cows definitely are 1.2, um, and the height it seems that that is basically set at 2, irregardless. So that's what I'm going to go with here. So what I'm going to do is just basically change the radius to 1.2 for the cows. Everything else I'm going to leave as it is at default. I'm not going to change any of those things there. Um, and all we need to do there is just click create. And now we have our new nav mesh. Uh, and that's it basically. So uh, once we've got our new nav mesh, we can see that that looks pretty good. It all lines up pretty good to the uh, troughs here. Um, and obviously we'd need to test that out, but uh, I think we should be good with that. Um, and then what we would need to do is, that should be at the zero point, which it is, fantastic. So here we can either, you know, set these as non-renderable, uh, which is probably what I would do, just set these as non-renderable. So if you need to make any changes, um, and you can see that actually does have lots of different things going on there so you come into the new ones and just click all these boxes all the way down to non-renderable or distance blending I should say and do the same with this one and distance blending okay so they're no longer visible they're not going to be rendered or anything um, and then we would need to export our nav mesh from here um, so it's a separate i3d so all we need to do is just basically click on that and I'm just going to copy the name from there and we'll just go file export selection and if I come into my mod folder here into here and I'm just going to paste the name in there and click save okay um, we'll just make sure that that actually has exported out which it has fantastic so now I can delete it from here I no longer require it in here so everything there should be set up fine um, now what I would say, um, you'll need to move certain parts here for everything to line up correctly. Um, so perhaps maybe before we actually make these uh, non-renderable, it might be a good idea to um, leave them actually renderable so we can see where everything needs to be expanded out to. Because we have lots of different things going on. Our fences for one of them. Now these ones here don't matter because they are, well, we don't need to adjust them in this particular case because that's just for the fence that goes between the two troughs, which I have not moved. So we can leave those as they are, but the others we're going to need to play around with. So this one here, that one, and then that one. So this one, we're going to need to expand that out. We just need to drag that out to uh, the edge of our new um yeah the size of the new area so perhaps maybe i don't know 40 would do something like that same with this one here so i'm just going to do 40 on that one and then uh, we'll need to uh, do this one to minus 40 okay and that one there also to minus 40 like so this one is fine this one here we're going to need to bring that out somewhere up here. So let's just see, maybe 48, 49.2, Okay, we'll go with that. Let's copy that, go to this one and we can basically paste that into there. So we're going to start our fence from here, go out to here, then up to here, cross to there, back to there, and then back to the start. Okay. Um, now you will need to do this for everything that um, needs to be set up. So your new clear area or your clear areas, clear areas are obviously going to need to be adapted to to fit. Um, you know the new size of your uh, cow pasture so let's see here this is kind of slightly outside of 
the uh, setup. So we'll just basically drag that back. Let's say, um, I don't know, 42 perhaps. 42.2, maybe 42.5 might do, something like that. Um, I don't know this one. Let's see. Uh, well, we'll put that into there. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that's probably going to be 80 some odd. Yes, because it's basically doubling it up. So it's. Uh, well, let's cheat. Let's do um, calculator. So 42.5 times 2 is 85. So this one is going to be 85. Is that right? That doesn't seem right to me, does it? Maybe it is. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. So calculator done good. OK, so let's take this one then. And let's see. That one's going to be a bit trickier to figure out. We'll just eyeball it, I think. Maybe go to 55. Yeah, that should do. I think that would be all right. Yeah. We'll do that. That's fine. And then we'll have to do the same potentially for our others. Depending on where you want, you know, um, things to grow and whatever else. So we've got an area here, which is our original area for our grass. So this one um, is going to need to come all the way out to the end. So we'll basically just drag that out to there. And I'm just eyeballing this. So you would need to be a little bit more um, specific for your new setup, whatever you're going to design. So we'll just basically bring this back to the trough. So, you know, something like that perhaps might do. Maybe we'll do um, 35. And then this one is going to go out to here, something like that. That's our forage area one. Then this one, let's see here. So this one okay and then this one and what's this one let's just see where we are with this that goes to there and that goes interesting so across to there and there okay so let's take that value and put that into there so that's going to go to there okay so that one that one so this one here is going to need to go all the way out to there and again like i say i'm just eyeballing this for this and so we'll just do to there and then this one we can just paste the value into there Okay, so that should be fine. Level areas, so we need to set up our level areas again. Let's just see what we've got. So we've got to there, to there. So start there, go to there, and go back to there, eh? That doesn't make any sense, does it? There, there, and then back to there. Okay. I guess that works. That's just for our troughs, I think. Yeah. OK, so we can leave that as it is because we've not changed any of that as such. Um, let's see. OK, so that goes from there to there to there. Right, so we need to move this one out to the end here Is that right let's see this one needs to actually this one needs to go back to there and again like i say just eyeballing it let's do uh, minus 40 this one is that 85 on it 85 no that's too far let's come back a little bit so we'll do 80 there then this one is going to be out to here. So we'll do maybe 48. Yeah, that'll do. Again, I'm going to say I'm just doing this really quickly here. So this one 
Let's see what we've got. So test area to test area. So what I would do here then is just basically move this back to here. So do maybe that. Then this one uh, we could possibly do seems a bit too much maybe I don't know maybe it's not no I think we'll do we'll do that that should be fine so from there to there and then I'm just going to basically take this one up to perhaps maybe somewhere to 48 something like that okay so that's that one and then the indoor let's do this to there to there okay so that's just again for the trough so we don't need to worry about that if we've not changed too much there and then this one we need to move that because that's just going to be covering this area so this one we can move back to there then this one um we can move that to 85 maybe i know let's do 80 yeah let's do 80 and then this one maybe to i don't know let's do 50 maybe a bit more than that let's do 50 two point something brother yeah something like that that'll be fine again like i keep saying i'm not doing this very um you know i'm just eyeballing things just to kind of do it quickly okay so we should have everything there lined up where we want it to be so let's just collapse all of that okay so everything there i think will be pretty good actually what we'll do is let's go back into here again and we'll just make those non-renderable like so now we can go ahead and save that close that okay so we have a new nav mesh which we need to load in we don't want to load the old one so go back into our xml here and where we have our <clears throat> file name for our navigation mesh we'll just take the name very important you need to make sure you spell it correctly and all upper uppercase and lowercase is correct as well otherwise you might get some kind of uh, case sensitive error so it's easier just to copy it and paste it so you know it's spelt correctly and all the uppercase and lowercase letters are in the right places and whatever else so we're going to load in our nav mesh our custom one and i'm just going to close all of that down um, i don't need this anymore so we close that don't need that anymore close that uh, I'll keep the old nav mesh there for now, but once you know that everything is working, obviously that one can be deleted. So we should be pretty good as far as that goes. So let's load back into game and we'll test it out. So I'm just going to pause while all this loads in. Okay, so we are now in game and I have uh, given myself loads of money and purchased all the land again. So we're going to go into here. I have no errors so far. Let's go construction, animals, and we have our pen. So we're going to click on that, and then we're going to come over here. What I'm going to do is go over to a bigger field, because obviously now our pen is much, much larger. So we click, and we're going to do like that. And uh, still no errors. Fantastic. So let's run over here quick. And we have our new pen. So we can clearly see now it's much larger and because we're using the dynamically loaded fencing system it's following the terrain perfectly which is fantastic. Um, question is, I buy cows, do they load in correctly? So I've still got this uh, a maximum of 15 cows so obviously I would need to up that if I was going to uh, for the larger pen i would want more than 15 cows in here but for this we'll just go with that that's fine and yeah they are all loaded in and the clear areas and everything else 
look okay. Um, yeah, pretty good. We've got grass all up to the edge. So for eyeballing that, I didn't do too bad of a job. Um, and we've got a nice clear area around the outside of the pen there. So yeah, again, I did pretty good for eyeballing it. Fantastic. And we have our cows in our pen. Again, no errors. So, so far, um, everything seems to be working okay. So if we go into here, go to our animals, and you can see we have all of our cows and everything. Obviously, I've got no feed for them or whatever else, but uh, that would, you know, be the next thing. Uh, but I don't see a problem with those because I never moved any of that stuff. So the triggers and everything for there should be still in their original location and whatever else. All I've done really is just literally expand the area out to give me a much larger cow pasture. But uh, yeah, hopefully there would have shown, uh, gives you guys a starting point to start, you know, expanding out your, your um, cow pastures, you know, your chicken pens or whatever else you want to do um, and set all of that up. A uh, very quick video, and I've kind of gone through this quite quickly, but I think if you, you know, maybe watch it a couple of times, you should be able to pick up, um, you know, what you need to get out of that. It's very much similar to what we did in um, 19, actually, or creating nav meshes and whatever else uh, with the with the additional planes. Um, but uh, obviously the uh, difference here is the navigation mesh is dynamically loaded in from the XML along with the pet that the uh, fence posts and the fencing system or whatever else but uh, you know if you're going to make a, an entirely new um, uh, mod with your own barn and things like that uh, there will be some differences there that you'll have to work with uh, but uh, I think you know if you just create your primitive plane within the Giants editor and lay it out you know as you need to following what I've done in the video make sure that you set your um, um, mask for the navigation mesh creation and then you know set your values up if you go on the Giants developer network I'm pretty sure the um, farming sim for dummies or whatever it is uh, handbook is there uh, you should be able to download that you will need to register uh, for the Giants developer network to give you access for downloads but it's free so and there's lots of information there um, a little bit out of date, but I'm sure that Giants will be updating that in the fu near future. Uh, you know, when they get round to that, they're very busy, obviously, at the moment <clears throat> with things going on. So um, keep an eye on that. And, you know, um, that's where you will also get the uh, Giants editor and uh, various other different things that uh, you will need to do any kind of modding anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Shaw Wizard, and I will catch you on the next one.